All right, welcome to yet a brand new and also exciting week of the desk now more than ever. I'm yours truly, Shadrach Shagav Kisame. Now, many thanks for always keeping yourselves glued onto the continent's leading intellectual platform. Actually, the highest platform for solution finding, you guessed right, the desk. And also for keeping yourselves glued onto U24 television. Now, we trust that every time you watch U24, you are inspired, you're motivated, but above all, you are educated. Now, Post pandemic, we're trying to find ways to survive. Now, here on the desk, we have made it our sole purpose to make sure that you get something in your pocket. We availed a platform to many people who talk to you and they make sure you have money in your pocket. They give you insights, nuggets, and also business ideas. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a parent, you better sit back, relax, better lean forward, even stand up because. They, the gentleman here, they have come up their company with something for children. They can become engineers at the age of six. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Shaka. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good to see you, man. Same here. Same yeah, here. yeah. You know, the pandemic has taught us that um, being physical or works that are engaging are becoming less and less efficient now i'm knowledgeable that uh, your initiative or your company your foundation you're trying to bring up kids that know how to code if mm -hmm. you can just introduce yourself and introduce the company to us yeah. hi everybody uh, my name is shaka mbanda shaka i'm from kavale a small town with global ambitions <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah, so basically what we, uh, uh, the, the, the name of the company for which I am a co-founder is called uh, Code Impact. Uh, and Code Impact basically seeks to provide mentorship mm -hmm. to, to African children mm -hmm. um, using code. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are not so much excited about the idea that the children will be computer engineers, mm -hmm. but rather we are excited about the kind of children who will create mm -hmm. on the journey mm -hmm. towards becoming computer engineers. That's why we talk about tech mentorship, because here we are trying to teach skills like problem solving, critical thinking, mm -hmm. organizational thinking, mm -hmm. tenacity, mm -hmm. all these things that the children will learn as they grow up into the whole coding ecosystem that's a buffet of skills right there yeah. can someone get all that in just this coding program indeed they can How? indeed they can because um the whole like for example if you're looking at uh, a program a computer program mm -hmm. um a computer program requires that the the the, the, the learner mm -hmm. um think in steps mm -hmm. cause and effect cause and effect uh, because they then think in steps, they tend to be more organized, mm -hmm. extracurricular, mm -hmm. because this is what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, you will find that uh, when they're working on a, on a project, many times it stalls because the code is not written properly. If there's one thing that a computer programmer requires, mm -hmm. it is tenacity, mm -hmm. grit, mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is the same quality that mm -hmm. entrepreneurs have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, and we're thinking that if the, if then we're able to give the children these skills, mm -hmm. they can then use them in other fields. The grit and the tenacity that they mm -hmm. gained here, or the organizational thinking that they got here, or the ability to see solutions, mm -hmm. abstract solutions. Right, right. We're hoping they can apply that in their quest of becoming the next African leaders. Yeah, isn't that too complex for? A young mind. No, it isn't. It isn't. We introduce it in form of play, you know, in form of play, um, depending on the level of the child. Mm -hmm. So if we can even teach it in nursery school, we can teach it in primary school, teach it in secondary school. Yeah. So, so we, have, mm -hmm. we have programs running in nursery school as well as primary school and secondary. But for each level, you can introduce the concepts of computer programming uh, using tools that are for that level. Yeah, you know, it's important for the viewers to understand this because I don't know if it's a stereotype or something where Africans, we feel like, <laughs> huh? No, I don't think you're ever too young to learn. Because No, okay. I mean for Africans, you know. For Africans, we feel like, ah, oh, yeah, that's why it's still so, so young. We have a Zoom. You know, you know when, when a white kid comes five years and they can code, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. because he's white. <laughs> but now an African child is like, <laughs> Yeah. 
they eventually run mad. Is it just a stereotype or are you telling me that there's light at the end of the tunnel for an African child to maybe be at six or seven and they can code things like whites? And if they can, if a child at six, uh, six years old can drive themselves and have the capacity to become a good coder, there is no reason why an African child at six cannot be a coder. But that's not where our emphasis is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. our emphasis is on, on on teaching the fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. And because those fundamentals of organizational thinking, algorithmic thinking, mm-hmm. uh, all these things are required mm-hmm. as young African minds seek African solutions to African problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So a good coder can be a good businessman because he, he, he knows how to think in steps. Mm-hmm. He can be a good businessman because he knows how to organize himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, that is the kind of thinking, that's what we have. Mm-hmm. But, but of course, if the children uh, get really interested in the coding yeah. and want to take it further, yeah, yeah. we have platforms, uh, communities, online communities, which where we bring them and mentor them into, yeah. into that direction. Yeah, Shaka, before we go for a short break, I, 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 I would want to find out, um, from your argument, I'm, I'm trying to, to find out that what you guys do with, the, with tech and code should be a foundation for any child out there, regardless of any field they are trying to embark on. Absolutely. Absolutely, because coding can even teach reading. Um, we have um, uh, some robots called B-bots that mm. we can use in nursery school to tell stories. Robots. Yes, so that you can actually program it to move from, say, the bank to, to the supermarket, from the supermarket to the clinic, and then pick up a few things. And you can write a story, a literal story, while uh, the child is also learning coding. So it, it, is, it is possible that these things can be, uh, these skills can be moved. Uh, many things can oh. be taught using code. Why are we exposing our children to such things? <laughs> you need them. We need them. We need them because... Um, Unless we learn technology, mm-hmm. we are never, as Africans, going to be doers. We will always be done. We will always be done. We will never be doers. Because if you see where the world is going, everything is going online, everything is yeah. becoming tech. All the billionaires are now tech And the people. pandemic has taught us. Yes, and uh, yes, of course. The pandemic has taught us that now what matters most especially is that... Uh, the education system finds a way of being pandemic proof access to content for example because because to be honest companies closed but there are people who were working at home mm-hmm. and they never stopped working no they didn't stop working especially because they had uh, online skills okay. yeah and if 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 you give 10 people online skills one of them gets out of poverty this is already proven I'm telling you, let's go for a short break. We come back. We dive deep into this discussion. Where is the position of government? Not politicking, but we would, like, <laughs> we would want to find out after the break. Now, do not go away. You're still a lovely audience. And it's still the desk we are broadcasting here at our home at Nile Avenue, UBC headquarters. But guess what? Your new 24 television, the desk. Do not go away. We're coming back. Well, in case you just joined us, I'm afraid you've missed the very fast, insightful segment of this very lovely episode of The Desk, where we're talking coding, but above all, we're talking tenacity. The gentleman in the chair actually emphasized it a lot. It's a skill that one requires for business, even medicine, you know, medical. So, but remember, you can follow this very lovely discussion on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, I said, for you who has children that are in school, whether teenagers, whether they're toddlers, I think you need to sit back and watch what this man has to say. Now, in your endeavors to make or to popularize your program, um, I'm very knowledgeable that uh, according to curriculum, they, they do not really forcefully or they didn't inculcate it in the curriculum where we have uh, for a nursery school and primary school where we have computer studies, mm-hmm. you know, they are not even examined. Mm-hmm. And uh, you find a child going to, for instance, I did ICT in, in Senior 5 for the very first time. Yeah. And uh, 
how can we make that because a lot of people failed by the way mm. how how do we make this then a much better space is it by introducing earlier by what you're doing mm. what, what, what what say you about that well uh thank you very much for that question because uh well we do not have a policy for teaching ict in primary schools in uganda uh, however, it does not mean that the children mm -hmm. do not need these skills yeah. because the rest of the world is teaching computer skills, yeah. uh, computer skills and coding mm -hmm. um, to, to their children. Mm -hmm. And these are the children that are going to be competing with our children. If we're going to have a chance of being the doers, mm -hmm. not the being done, mm -hmm. um, we, we need to give our children the skills that they need right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as early as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do is, uh, we, 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 for example, with Code Impact, we go into schools and, and we tell them, you do not have to start, you do not have to, to, to have a computer lab together mm. with uh, expensive computer people looking after it with all the power that it runs, and yet it's not even being examined at P7. So what we do is we tell you, for, for us, we're going to come with our own tutors, with our own computers, mm -hmm. and for a small fee, very small thing, yeah. uh, have the children learning, have the children learning um, once a week for one hour for the whole time. Okay. So you find children who otherwise wouldn't have access to these skills. But to be fair enough, access. to be fair enough, Shaka, that's very expensive for a school. Imagine setting up a lab. Yes. And putting computers in there. Yes. Even if it was examined, it would still be expensive. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes children don't even have access to these computer labs if the computer labs yes, are there, are there they're yes. always closed. Did you yes, 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 yes. I experienced school? it in high yeah. school. Yes. So, so they, they, they don't get to really um, have access to these skills early enough. But, so, but you're so. talking about why, why are computer labs always closed? Why, <laughs> why Stanley, why, why are in a computer lab? Why, why was it always closed? <laughs> I don't know. It was always closed. Uh, and the, the, the lab person feels so important. Important? So important. What? And they would only be there like three yeah. people? What? Yeah. How come? Yeah, it's never free. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Okay>. yes, continue. <laughs> yeah. So we, 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 we believe that with this innovation, because, you know, when we started, we were charging 20,000. Now we charge 30,000 for a whole term. This is the for term per, per child. Months, per child. And, 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 and they're paying, that's around 3,000 shillings per lesson. And then you, we come with our, our computer, we teach, um, in that level, we, know, we, we teach uh, more of computer skills than just than coding. coding yes. Yeah. So they're are you guys appreciating word, this? Are word they Excel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. They're appreciating. Mm -hmm. Those who do really do appreciate and they see it. How far are you guys Because the children going? are learning Word, Excel, mm -hmm. PowerPoint, yeah. teaching them how to use Zoom, uh, calendars, how to organize yourself with calendar, calendars, how yes. to, yeah, presentations. Talking about, yeah. Talking about calendars, yeah. Talking about calendars, I had is. a meeting the other day. I um, mean, in the pandemic, mm. you, you know, um, but I had a meeting with, with with someone in Nairobi, and and to be honest, I used calendar for the very first time, <laughs> the very first yeah. time. So we need more Ugandans using calendar. Guys, said, I'm like, hey, book me up on your calendar. Yes. And I'm like, oh, I had to yes. Google. Yes. Those are the tools of organization. They are also tools of collaboration. Many ways. We also want to teach children safe internet usage. In fact, one of the things that uh, we are doing at Code Impact is to go into schools to talk about uh, social media and its harm mm -hmm. so that the children can know early enough. This mm -hmm. we're doing as a free service to as many schools as we can. Just How far are you guys going? People who are watching me, for instance, in Cheva and Chikuba Mutwe down there, are you going to those schools? Yes, we are. Because you may be here, Ngabali Muganoga. Ga, 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 uptown for uh, people who can afford. We're in Atlas Junior Academy. It's in uh, in Boise, Lugoba. Mm. Yeah, we're teaching there about 200 children. Secondary okay. school as well as primary school. So before we even go any further, there's maybe a parent or a, a school administrator, someone watching you right yeah. now. How do they get to you? Telephone number? Yes, how do they <laughs> get to you? Oh, good. I love that. That's the best part. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, please call us to um, your school. We can teach uh, in nursery school. We can teach in primary school. We can teach in secondary school. In secondary school, we're very proud to tell you that if, you, if we come to teach ICT in, 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 in your secondary school, your children will pass. They will pass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so all you have to do is um, call us. Call me on 0778 uh, 244 Five, six, four.
Anything? An email? Uh, email. Do they have an email? I think I think a, a phone call is easier. A phone call is easier. <laughs> okay. A phone call or WhatsApp. It's also on WhatsApp. Okay, you want to do that again? Yes. Do, do that again. Uh, that is 0778-244-564. For just 30,000 shillings, the children will have a whole term of learning using our computers as well as using our tutors. We also have a curriculum for primary school and we can come and teach with running coding and robotics clubs in case you want something that more complex we can also do it for you you know this is a very expensive project or program yeah. 30,000 yeah yeah when someone here has 200 kids but it's expensive the team you have to run with you guys have what donors you have grants well, well, how are you guys running this thing well we're running on private uh, money um, we have not yet got donors or grants but it would make a lot of sense for us to get the grants uh, because we attempted something with KCCA, okay. where they allowed us to go into the, uh, their five divisions and they'd give us a private school and a public school mm -hmm. uh, in which we could go and teach. Mm -hmm. But we found that the public schools were unable to take us because the children could not afford it. In fact, that time it was 20,000. They couldn't afford it. Yeah. So there is a need for somebody who can pay us to teach. Those, those, those children. But then the ones that can pay 20000 as well, those who can afford, the schools that mm -hmm. can afford, those ones also need the skills. It's not only the Muntua Wansi, Nyo, 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 Nyo. Mm -hmm. Even the Muntua Makati yeah. also needs. But Shaka, you know, you make a very important point when you talk about the, the, the UPE, the, the public schools. Mm. Because now... Also, you you need you need you need operation costs. You need you need so 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 how how then do we because policymakers are here watching? How do we then make sure that these people are part of the program? Because that means we are going to have a lot of Muntua once going to high school without actually deficient of any knowledge for computer. Oh well, I cannot tell you that we have a solution for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I can tell you that you have a solution for everyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, all I know is that if we can do the work that we uh, want to do mm -hmm. with the people that we're going to do it with, we will have a big impact mm -hmm. uh, without overly being concerned with covering everybody. Yeah. We know that whoever we are touching in Uganda, be it the top class schools mm -hmm. or the middle class schools, mm -hmm. all of them need these skills and they're not getting them. Doesn't it, doesn't it sound unfair to the other child? It is unfair. How I wish, uh, how I wish other players or mm -hmm. could come in or how I wish government can help us. Exactly, that's what I was going to ask. Like, <laughs> can't you guys meet other stakeholders? <laughs> I hope so. We mm -hmm. are trying. We mm -hmm. are trying. We, we, we're speaking to many people. We have laid the ground, the groundwork. A lot of people are being spoken to. Mm -hmm. So we believe that uh, definitely as... Uh, time goes on as we go forward mm -hmm. um, our work is going to be noticed mm -hmm. um, and, and then you know we'll get a lot of people to support us to reach much further I'm telling you now we're going for a short break but when we come back we're still with Mr. Shaka here and there, there are a lot of things that you actually as a person as a Ugandan think about and say hey where is Muntua once you going to get all these things but after the break we're still diving deep into the conversation but you also can reach out to us on our social media platforms Facebook, Instagram and Twitter that is for Shadrach Kisame and do that for the desk also do that for U24 television but do not go away we're coming back Now, the emergency of everything tech is taking over the country and the world by storm, more especially with the recent pandemic. Everything is now digital. There's now cryptocurrency. Digital. Yeah. Everything is digital. So tonight's show, we're just trying to appreciate how we can embrace tech, but from a young age. Because to be honest, there are people even who get jobs and they can't even operate the normal standard Excel packages. But... Mr. Shaka here has the medicine for you. So someone never attended nothing, but they're in office. How do you help them? They can't use Word, they can't, use, they can't present PowerPoint because the system is damaged as it is. So yeah. this person now, how do you help them? Well, we can have private uh, classes with them, 
but um, yeah, really, we can we do have a, a, a an arrangement where we can have private classes, although we've not had an opportunity mm -hmm. of training an adult. Mm -hmm. We haven't, we haven't for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, we do have a a, a package in yeah. our company at Quad Impact where we can we can do private study. Yeah, because to be honest, Shaka, there are people who get jobs and you're like, how the heck did you get here? Mm -hmm. They cannot present. Mm -hmm. Talk about hey, Shadrach, help me here. I'm like, you're my superior. You, how you can't operate a computer? You, can, you can't use what? You can't who use. Hired them? You who hired them? <laughs> how did you even get here? Yeah. But now that actually justifies what you're saying. Mm -hmm. From the roots, mm -hmm. it is. It is it's, we, it's very yeah. important to start from from down there. Uh, bend it when it's still soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get these brains to think uh, in, in a way that is 21st century compliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this you start early enough. It's very important. Because even these expatriates that people give, uh, you know, at first I, I, I was of this thought that, oh, expatriates, oh, when you get a Kenyan person, oh, when you get, you know, white, they're very good with computer, what presentation. But I think these are things that they learned while they were young. Absolutely. It all starts in the education. So it starts in the education, in the curriculum, right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yes, as, as, as long as they are exposed to these, these, these skills early enough, definitely they have an advantage. And the problem is, is that now... The issues that we are facing are global issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Climate change, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. radiation, mm -hmm. migration, mm -hmm. all these things, global warming, all, all these things, they are global in nature. Mm -hmm. So to be able to find a solution for them requires someone that thinks at a global level. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to think at a global level, you're going to compete at a global level as well. So if our children are left behind, mm -hmm. if they are unable to even do basic stuff, then they risk being irrelevant to, 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 yeah. to the journey towards a better humanity. Talking about irrelevance, do you then say that um, our unemployment at a global level or even at a national level is justified by our incompetence or inefficiency when it comes to... Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I, I know very many people that have jobs that they're doing online that uh, are not local. They're not local. They're earning money from companies abroad. Mm -hmm. They're earning in dollars and euros mm -hmm. because of their skills. So if we uh, had computer skills, if we had coding skills, if we had technology skills, definitely, definitely more people would be employed because mm -hmm. there's a lot of employment now happening on the internet. That's where everything is going. Mm -hmm. yes. So someone, so, so, for, so for people who are watching me, you have a skill, and maybe it's maybe a knowledge gap that people do not know that this job is actually on the internet. Oh yes, there is this. I forget. I forget the site. Is I forget the site. LinkedIn? No. Mm. Work, work. Oh my God, I forget it. But it's just a site, and you just go it. on. You go there, yeah. Upwork. It's called Upwork. Upwork. Yes, Upwork. It's yes, called Upwork. Upwork. Yes, yeah. Upwork. Yes, Upwork. Up yes. Up work. Yes. Yes. Up yes. Work. So you go there, you put your skills, whether you're an MC, whether you are, you're a digital artist, whatever it is, they will give you jobs in your inbox. Okay. Now, I see that's where the future is. This is where everything is going. So if, if you get these skills, you can actually start to earn money and you do not need to earn it in a local way. You can become a remote worker, mm -hmm. which gives you freedom. Mm -hmm. So what's going on down there on the streets with our youth? Is it politics or is it a skill set gap? Because they they are rioting. Is it, is it, is it, are they right? Is it the, the policies are bad, or is this just they just just lack skill set and they, they are shouting? Hmm. Well, the policies lead to skill sets. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I think I think there is definitely a a, a, a lack of uh, skills hmm. and skills in computer uh, mm -hmm. things. And get money quickly. They get mm -hmm. money quickly. They create wealth quickly. And there are many jobs that they can't get enough of computer engineers, mm -hmm. these big organizations. Meaning that if you really invest mm -hmm. in getting these skills, technology skills, mm -hmm. uh, you may not need to go to the streets to riot. You might actually be so busy on your computer with this internet that is now becoming ubiquitous. Uh, you know, there's now fiber internet. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, so, yes. So there is speed. Mm -hmm. We have issues now. Speed. So you can actually do a lot of work and send big files and, mm -hmm. and, and, and work remotely. All right. So before we wind up, I, 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 with 
Tanzania and Kenya, you figure out even people stream a lot. There is easy access to internet. Internet penetration is is better than Uganda. But how how did then does government come in to make internet penetration really better and then also you know make it cheaper what how what 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 would you tell to a government official who is watching to make internet uh internet reception way easier hmm oh uh, well 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 um there is now fiber internet mm -hmm. and i'm sure the existence of fiber internet currently mm -hmm. is because of a change in policy Mm. Otherwise, the policy, if had it been there earlier, we would have had this fiber. Uh, we've been using wireless internet. So already, the fact that there is fiber internet reaching homes now mm -hmm. shows that government is already playing a, 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 a good role mm -hmm. of creating an enabling environment in which faster internet is available to people in their homes mm -hmm. to ensure them to that they to ensure that they can actually do international work it's very important to have the right speeds to do the work otherwise if you don't have you the can't right compete speed, you can't you can't so this step the fact that i have fiber internet in mm -hmm. my home means that government is providing a, a good environment and i hope they remain like that uh, is it need expensive it, further. it is well, because, it because is shut. attract our attention uh, and indeed they do. Mm -hmm. So when they attract our attention, we don't really have time to introspect and think deeply about solving real issues. Mm -hmm. Now, as an African, as an African in the African continent, I, I, I believe that Africans need to really think deeply about how we are going to solve some very big issues that mm -hmm. face us currently. Mm -hmm. For that to happen, we need uh, attention mm -hmm. to be high up. So we want to go into schools to talk to children, um, primary schools secondary schools uh, to let them know about the danger of social media social in particular media. yes yeah so that uh, when they are using it they are using it as informed users mm -hmm. yeah this is what we want and we believe that once that probably we'll get a few disciples who will follow us mm -hmm. and, and and make the change that we desire to see i'm telling you because even other corporate companies you find that they've disabled such apps yes you find that you can't find facebook on, on a you company can, you company. can't focus you can't focus on work when you check your timeline you need the 10 minutes to come back to what you were doing. Then when you're there, WhatsApp is begging you to check. Yes. You check. You need another 10 minutes to come back and focus. So there's no focus where there is social media. So how are then the people who sell products there again? Well, that's an, a different story. Those ones want you, your attention on the app. And that's what Facebook promises us. I also advertise there. Mm -hmm. They tell you, we'll give you eyeballs. I am yeah, and then they, they, they get the best engineers in the world and say, how do you make people addicted to, to this? this? We want their eyes there. I'm telling yeah. you. So this is something that we want. In fact, we ask schools to invite us and mm -hmm. we would like to come and we'll show the movie, The Social Dilemma, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk to the to, students. To the students. Yeah, so is that, that at a fee? You do that at a fee? Free. Free of charge. Free of charge. This okay. is called Impact's way of saying we are an impact company. And right. Change. You know, Shaka, we can never exhaust all this in these 30 minutes of the <laughs> desk. I'm afraid we've come to the climax. But your last words to the viewers watching you under 60 seconds. Oh, well. Um, Africa is the next frontier for development. Uh, everyone is talking about it. Everyone is rushing here. But the people that are coming here are finding us as a human uh, resource uh, poorly. Equipped. For example, if you look at like the oil in, in, in Hoima, very few Ugandans are employed in the real money-making areas mm, of the mm. oil production because of lack of skill set. Mm. Now, we believe at Code Impact that we can make a difference by equipping uh, African children, not only with the skills, being the computer skills, the skills that count for the 21st century, but also the mind. We want to work on the mind and give the mind the skills that they need Mm. to be problem solvers. Mm. Africa needs people who identify problems mm -hmm. and give solutions easily. Mm. And these have to be Africans, not people from abroad. They have to be Africans. So I believe that we need to build that kind of capacity. Mm -hmm. And that's why Code Impact is there, to use coding to mentor Africans to be change makers right, and problem right. solvers. All right. It is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. That is Mr. Shaka Mbanda. Yes. For you, I am telling you, this man, some people are patriotic, but they are not 
uh, actively in politics. They are using the tools they have to impact the country, but then also to impact the continent. Now, you've been a lovely audience. I would like to sign out for me and the entire 24 management would like to say good night, good luck, adios, for God and my country. May the good Lord bless this beautiful Uganda. Until next week, same place, same time. Of course, same host. Good night.